This year, I, wanna, I just want to use a title, 2018, A Year to Hear. How many of you believe it's a year to hear what the Spirit says to your heart? Father, we just give you thanks for today, for everyone who's assembled, to hear your word, to worship you in spirit and in truth, that the music brings in your presence, and that in your presence we can bask and be touched by the head of the church, the Lord Jesus. Thank you for utterance in the Holy Spirit to speak your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. On New Year's Eve, B and I went and had dinner with our son Josh and Samantha. 
our daughter-in-law and our granddaughter, Alyssa. And we had a great time, but about uh, 10 o'clock, we decided to go home. And so we came home and we decided we're going to watch the ball drop at midnight. So we did that, you know, we found the best channel we thought we could, Fox, I thought was a little better than the rest of them, and even that you blip some, you understand, but anyhow, we, we did good, we had a good time, we watched the ball drop, and then immediately, the first thing we did, we got on our knees before our Heavenly Father as the first act of 2018. Then we got up and kissed and then went to bed. That's a good way to start a new year, wouldn't you say Amen. So then the next day, the the New Year's Day, we decided to go horseback riding. And uh, we put our horses in the trailer and we went over to Alify, which is a state park in Plant City. And uh, we we took our horses out. We'd actually gone late in the day. It was after three o'clock. And you know, it gets dark early now. And so we're out riding and and uh, following the trail, and we just decided to go on these, some of these off trails. They're, they're actually marked yellow that you can loop around and loop around. But as it began to get dark, the sun had gone down, and I didn't know where we were. That's unusual for me. I usually have a pretty good sense of direction, but I'd look up and the, you know, there's no evidence where the sun is. You know the sun goes down in the west, so if you see the sun, you know to go west if you're going towards the road that's west. But I couldn't tell. So I come out and I point my horse in a direction and he didn't want to go. He just didn't want to go there. He knew it's time to go home and eat. And he didn't want to go there. And typically, you don't let a horse tell you what to do because you're training them or untraining them every time you ride them. And so you got to be careful about that, not giving them their head, let them do what they want. So I just tried to force him to keep going the other way. He did, but he didn't like it. And you could tell it. He'd keep every little chance. He'd try to turn back left and turn around. So finally, I thought, since I don't know where I'm going, (laughs) and he seems to know where he's going... I'm going to just give him the reins. And no more did I do that than he just spun around and went in the opposite direction. And I told B, I said, let's watch how this turns out. He was absolutely definite in the direction he wanted to go. You've heard of the word horse sense? All of us need a little horse sense. So he turns around and he heads back. I don't know, we're about 20 minutes out or so, but it's getting dark on us. And so anyhow, he comes up to this T. You can go right or left. You can't go straight ahead. But before I would have the chance to guide him in a direction, he anticipated me and went left, but went a little off course and went to make sure he got on that left uh, path trail. So he kept going that trail and going that trail. And then he turns, we come up to another T and he turned perfectly. And after about 20 minutes, 20 to 30, I don't think it was quite 30. All of a sudden we look up and right in front of us is the trailer in the truck. He, <laughs> he had brought us perfectly, perfectly, even though we had to take some detours to get there, he brought us perfectly where we needed to go. Well, obviously the analogy is we need to turn loose of the reins on God and let him lead us and guide us because when we do that, it'll be amazing how he will guide us in our personal lives. I want you to punch somebody and say, that's what I need to hear today. And it's really true. Why did it turn out so well? Because at that point, I trusted my mount to get me where we needed to go. And so I can't find a better verse than Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, which says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. You know, my head was giving me a fit. How does this horse know more than I do? Well, pretty easily. (laughs) Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not. To your own understanding. So many times in life when we are lost and in a maze and the clouds are uh, uh, blocking the sun from us, sometimes you don't even feel like you can hear God because of circumstances of life. That's when we need to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, not lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, turn the reins to Him and He will direct our paths. 
That is not a new message to our church, but it's a fresh message every time it comes. Because every time we speak on this, different things come out of that. But I know this, that once you're saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, the next most important subject you need in your life is how to follow the voice of your shepherd. He loves you. How many, how many of you looking back, you realize I've made some real messes in the past. You need to look back at 16 and you can find some. You can go back to 15 and you're going to find more. You go back to 14 and you're going to find more. In other words, the further back you go, the more you're going to think to yourself, there's some changes I would have made had I had it all over. But you do have it all over in 2018. You can start 2018 off in a positive way, following the voice of the shepherd, and you'll be amazed at how he will direct you and guide you and, and, and watch you as you go along life's journey. You, you watch the leading of the Holy Spirit and he'll watch you and he comes to see what you will do. I've learned this about the Lord. If I just choose to go on my own, he'll let me. I'll feel a little rumbling from the Lord. It's not what he wants, but he'll let you. Remember Israel? They wanted a king. God didn't want them to have a king. But they insisted, we want to be like all the other nations. And we Christians, if we're not careful, we want to be like all other people. But we're not like the world. We're not of the world. Hallelujah. We're different than the world. We must be different. If we can't look at a Christian and see they're different from the world, then there's something wrong with that person's Christianity. Because if you're going to be like Jesus, there's going to be some things you're going to say no to. And if you're going to be like Jesus, there's going to be some things you say yes to. And you're going to head in a different direction than everybody around you doesn't mean you're prude. It doesn't mean you act a certain way or better than other people. You just simply walk your life out just like they're doing in the direction the Lord wants you to go. And at the end of the day, not only will you be blessed, but you'll be a testimony to the goodness of God. They will watch your life and they'll say, I see somebody who things seem to just turn out okay for. I see them go through things just like we do. I see them have things happen to them. But they, instead of just panicking, they seem to trust in the Lord. And the next thing you know, it all works out. Isn't that the way life is for you and me? Just say out loud, it seems to work out when I follow the Lord. But how many of you have noticed when you follow your own self, it doesn't work out as well? It's not that you're not intelligent. It's not that you're not bright. It's just that you know, you can, it's just like a prospectus or something, somebody that's had a business for 10 years, a business model, and you look at it and you see trends of how the business is doing well, but you can't see the future. You can only see trending the past. And if we're not careful, we look at just what we've seen instead of what's ahead. God knows what's ahead better than you know what's already happened. And I just know that as a child of God, I'm to come like a child, trust him with every fiber of my being. You know, I've noticed something about little children. Little children trust what you tell them. At Christmas time, think back for a few weeks. Your kids told you something they wanted. They never worried anymore about it. Now, you'd pick on them, I'm sure, if you're like me, told little fib along. And uh, I don't mean tell lies, you understand, but I tell them it's all right at Christmas time. Shouldn't do that, but anyhow. Uh, hey, you know, we do kind of lead them to believe we didn't get what we already got for them. Anybody here do that besides me? Let me see your hand. Sure you do. You don't have to sit there and look so pious. And, uh, but no, and, and the thing of it is, uh, they trust that when you've told them, they've asked you and they've rested it with you. They trust you to do what they have requested. We should have that same heart towards our heavenly father that as children, he says, come to me as a little child. Matter of fact, the disciples were trying to push away uh, the little children. Jesus said, forbid them not. For if such is the kingdom of God, we're to come like little children. And so when we're following the Lord, when we're, when we're walking our ways just like Israel, they, they felt like what they wanted was better than what God had. We want to be like all the other nations. We want to go out and be just like them. But he says, look, I'm going to grant you your request, but you're going to end up with leanness of soul. Didn't he tell them that? And he gave them their choice, but it wasn't his will. 
It wasn't his plan. It was never his plan. And he told them, now I'm going to give you what you're asking, but I want you to know ahead of time, it's going to be burdensome to you. It's going to be difficult to you. But they insisted on their own way, and they suffered a lot of things they would not have had to suffer had they listened to the Lord to start with. There's things he wants out of your life. There's things he wants you to do, and there's things he doesn't want you to do. And he says, just follow me, and it'll all turn out all right if you'll trust me with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Glory to God. Say out loud, I believe that. Hallelujah. Isaiah says something interesting, and I, I, I want to use this as a way to prepare for hearing the voice of the Lord. He said this in Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait on the Lord, you see, we want to get in a hurry. How many of you know you like getting in a hurry? If you're like me, I mean, God can't tell me anything till kind of the last minute because he tells me I'm going to go do it. Any of you like that? My nature, kind of like Peter, impetuous. Anybody have a nature like that other than me? You wanted it yesterday? You want it done right now? I mean, the hardest thing I did was waiting on this construction out here. I wanted to go ahead and get it all done. But I kept knowing, and I don't. I don't violate that, usually. There's a few times I have, and I got a great story for you one of these days, where I just impetuously moved personally, literally, and, and missed the Lord. Have you ever done that? How many of you can say in, in uh, 17, I missed the Lord? How many of you can say in 18, I don't plan to? And that's what this is all about today. Look at me. You do not have to miss it again. If we will wait on the Lord. Wait means you just don't move forward. You just wait. You hesitate. You hold back. You're waiting for the wind of the Spirit. You're waiting for the green light. You're waiting for the Lord to lead you into the thing that you're wanting to do. But you want to make sure it's Him and not just you. Wait on the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord, listen, they will renew their strength. How many of you feel sometimes spiritually weak? Every time I, I can't speak for you, but I know this. Every time I feel spiritually weakened, it's because I've not taken adequate time to wait on the Lord. We get busy in life. Pastor in the church, you're very busy. There's so many things. There's so many fires to put out and so many things that you have to deal with all the time. It's not just, I mean, the minute one's over, something else comes. It's just part of pastoring. You're dealing in people's lives. And so uh, if you're not careful, you lose your spiritual strength. And that's why sometimes you just see me, I retreat. I pull back a little bit. I've got to go re refuel. You know, like out traveling on the highways, you see your, get your tank, your, your, your lead line coming down to empty. And guess what you do? You pull off to refuel. Why? Because if I keep going, I'm going to run out of fuel. And that's the thing we are spiritually. He says if we'll wait on the Lord... And waiting means more than just halting. Waiting means you're in there waiting to hear a word from the Lord. You're waiting to find direction. You're waiting in his word. I just know this, that when, I'm, when my word level gets down, my faith level gets down. And the minute that my faith level gets down, I know to run to the Word. Go fill myself up with the Word. Go wait in the Word. I mean, I mean, just sometimes just sit down somewhere and just open the Bible and read it. I remember a few years ago, I just had felt some of that. And I went and uh, just took the, the New Testament and read straight through. It took me 12 hours to read straight through the New Testament. But I'm telling you what, when I got to the end of the New Testament, I wasn't weak anymore. I wasn't weary anymore. I I had waited on the Lord and I'd waited in his word and something happened on the inside of me. Hallelujah. The word of God brings life. They that wait upon me shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And then the song goes on to say, teach me, Lord, to wait. So every Christian in this room this morning, I want you to just lift your beautiful hands up for a moment with me and just say this with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that what I'm hearing is true. And I know that there are times I fail to do this. 
and every single time it costs me. But this year, I don't want it to cost me. I want this year to wait on you. I want to be full of strength and I want to move in the power of the Spirit. Not my own way, not my own will, but I want to follow you every day in 2018. Hallelujah, come on and give him praise. I'm not gonna speak very long today. I just wanted to come in and remind you to pick up on this because I believe that the Spirit dropped that in my heart, 2018, a year to hear. I always look for something from the Spirit that I can kind of base that around and start moving in that direction. Why do I say that? Because we will face both positive and negative things this year. Don't you think for one minute that everything's going to be roaring beautifully every day of this year? We're going to have some challenges. How many of you sense that? But we're also going to have blessings. I choose blessing. And when challenges come, I'm going to put my faith in God. Praise God. And I'm going to follow him. And if I get caught in something, he's going to show me the way out. Hallelujah. You may get yourself in a jam unintentionally. But if you wait on the Lord and renew your strength, he will show you the door. He will show you the exit to the way out of that situation. Hallelujah. You may go to make a business deal and it doesn't seem right to you. You're having to push it. You're having to force it. I found out when that happened, just pull back. Wait until you get direction from the Lord. Hallelujah. It's true in your own personal life. It's true in your family. It's true in your relationship. You know, I don't know about you, but I want the best relationship with my wife this year that I've ever had. I think it's important to put her first. And I've noticed this. When I do that, she treats me wonderfully. She'd like to knock me in the head otherwise, but she knows. She does. It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, like the last couple of days, I've been flat on my back sick. I actually didn't know if I was going to get to be down here this morning. And I thought, there's no way I'm not going to be to church on the first Sunday of the new year, devil. You are not going to keep me down. I'm going to go out there and give what I've got. But but I'll be honest with you, in the flesh, and I'm going to stay away from you, I don't feel particularly good. But you know what? My spirit, my spirit is alive unto God because I haven't been sitting there watching TV. I've been listening to the Word. I just turned on the Word. What I do, I'll read it a while. Sometimes I turn it on. I listen and read while I'm, I'm doing that. And sometimes I'm just reading out loud the Word myself. I do combinations of that. But I just start in Matthew and I just keep going. Matthew, Mark, Luke. I just keep rolling along. And the more I roll along, the stronger I get. Well, what happens when I do that? I'm more sensitive to the Spirit of God in me, and I will not make the mistakes that I might would have made had I not done this up front. And that's what I want to encourage you. Just take the time. I know a lot of you, you're very busy, you're extremely busy, but don't ever get so busy that you don't have time to do the most important thing, which is seek first the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? Punch somebody and say, I needed to hear that today. Punch your husband or wife and say, we needed to hear that today. Because you do. There's going to be tremendous opportunities, but there's going to be also plenty of opportunities to get caught in a trap. Sometimes I think when it's the easiest, it's the hardest. What I mean by that, there's a lot of opportunities. Find the one that fits you best and works best for you and get in that. Can you say amen? And then Jesus said something here. In the Revelation, John was on the Isle of Patmos. He'd been sent there. He'd been vanquished. And he heard first person the voice of Jesus. And so the first three chapters of the Revelation have a lot of red in them. But the one thing that he said to all seven churches, exactly the same, he who has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. We well, say that's to the churches. Well, you're part of the church. The ecclesia, the called out ones, we're called out of darkness into light. 
You're no longer a child of darkness. You're a child of the light. When these things all happen around us, it's going to catch the people of darkness unaware. But it's not going to catch us unaware. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. But you're not of darkness that that should take you unaware. Hallelujah. You and I walk in the light. We walk in the beauty of the light of the gospel. And we will know things supernaturally in our hearts. Can you say amen? Amen. And I want to wait on the Lord. I was thinking about that with B. She waited on me. Oh, my Lord. You'd think she's so happy I'm sick. (laughs) She's not, but she waited on me. She'd come in, check on me. First thing she did, she went to McDonald's. Got me two Diet Cokes instead of one. (laughs) Brought it home to me. Oh, by the way, did you all read that? A 104-year-old lady. They asked her, what's the secret to your longevity? She said, Diet Coke. Just this week, I I was over at Josh's when I read that and I hollered right out, hey, listen to this. (laughs) They don't kill everybody. (laughs) Aren't you glad you came to church? Aren't you glad you're in the house of the Lord? Aren't you glad there's a cheery spirit in the house of the Lord? We're not people of doom and gloom but of blessing. And even when there's doom and gloom around, we can end up being blessed right in the middle of it. Hallelujah. We don't know what's going to happen this year. There's all kinds of rumors and conspiracy theories floating everywhere. I just know this. They that wait upon the Lord, those may not, but they that do shall renew their strength. And that's what I'm going to do. You're going to do that? And we're going to put each other first. We're going to put God first and we're going to put each other first. We're going to love each other, and we're going to do right by each other. Husbands, the Bible says, love your wives. Wives, show that you honor your husbands. What happens in a home if the husband and the wife are really honoring each other? The children come in harmony. But where the house is divided, a house divided against itself can't stand. One of the most horrible way to raise children is when the husband thinks one thing and the wife thinks the other. And they express to the children those disagreements. I don't know where this is coming from. It's not in my notes. It's just for us. Amen? And, and as we love one another and we honor one another and we put each other first, I believe our houses will be in order. And when our houses are in order, God, the Spirit of God, is there. Matter of fact, Jesus said when you go to a house... And you say, peace to this house, and the son of peace is not there, then that'll return to you. And you go on and wipe the dust off your feet. There's houses where the Spirit of God is not. Why? Because there's so much discord and dissension and arguing and fussing. You say, well, I can't help it. My husband or my wife, they cause all this stuff. Well, you don't have to. Do you know what I've learned with B and I in years of this experience of marriage? How many of you know it's an experiment? I've learned that when her voice is not just right, (laughs) she's going through something that I can light a fire to or I can shut up and be quiet and it'll pass. But if I go say something in retaliation, guess what? The Bible says how great a fire we do kindle. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Come on, don't you sit there. Don't you afraid your husband's going to see you, wife's going to see you? I'm not saying it's them. It could be you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But this year, we don't have to live like that. We don't have to live like we lived in 16 or 17 or 15 or 13. We can live like God wants us to live today. We can be filled with the Spirit. We can walk in harmony in our homes. We can be directed by the Holy Spirit. We can have a life of blessing and peace and joy and the good things of God and no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. Every voice that rises up against us in judgment is condemned already for this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. I want you to sell out. He wants me whole. He wants me well. He wants me blessed. He wants me prospered. He wants me at peace. Hallelujah. Speak to your home peace and then say to the storm, be still. 
Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. I'm glad I came to church today. I love one translation about this. It says this. I was just talking about the seven churches and Jesus saying, He who has an ear, let him hear. Listen to what one translation says. Are your ears awake? We have them, but are we listening? Listen. Listen to the wind words, the Spirit blowing through the churches. When the Spirit of God begins to blow in a service, just the moving of the Spirit, it's amazing the direction that'll come in your life. But if it's just a bunch of fluff, and there is the absence of the Spirit of God, just entertainment. Now, I think it's all right to have some entertainment in church. I don't, I don't think church ought to be boring at all. I think you ought to enjoy coming, and it should have that element to it. But if that's all we have, all we're offering is fluff. Fluff won't deliver. Fluff won't heal. Fluff won't bring direction. But it's amazing as we get over into that realm, the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. That's what I sat down with my musicians and talked to them about. Just when I said, look, you know, I, 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 all this is great. I like good music, but what we've got to have is that presence. I'm telling you, this church is dedicated to the presence of God. That's the, that's the franchise. If you want to go look at McDonald's, they all have that big McDonald's sign out front. Anywhere in the world. I've been all over the world, and I always look for that sign. I love a McDonald's Diet Coke. They don't taste the same, by the way, in Europe they do here. Little different. But it's a franchise. And the church ought to have a big logo out of front where God's presence is. Because when you come in, some days you're up and you're a little more carnal and you're not really so desiring that. But when you're down and you've got a struggle and you've got nowhere to turn but God, you don't want to go into a dead church service. You want to go where there's some life and where there's some encouragement and where there's some strength and where the delivering power of God that he can set you free and he can turn the situation around. Hallelujah. And so that's why the wind words come. They're called prophecy. They're the spirit of prophecy in the house of the Lord. Prophecy is encouraging. It's the spirit of God coming with encouragement to encourage us on our journey with God. And when the atmosphere gets right, you're going to have wind words spoken by the spirit when we sing and bring in that presence and the presence of God comes. And then we get up and we preach in the fire of that presence. It's amazing what will happen in our church and what will happen in every life and every person you bring to the house of God, you think, oh, I hope it's not one of these Sundays. You better hope it is one of those Sundays because that's what will draw them by the Spirit. So I just want to encourage that. I know this year I plan to have more team in, as far as preaching. I'm going to do a lot of the preaching, but I want to bring some other voices in. I remember one time years ago the Lord said to me, if everything that has to happen at Family Worship Center has to come through you, Family Worship Center is going to be mighty limited. That's why I've got Dr. J. Dennis coming to speak on the 28th. He's got a message in his heart. He and I have become friends. I love him dearly. He's a Baptist uh, pastor at First Baptist for 20-some years. He's a precious man of God. And uh, I just had a, a, a quickening. He's got something really strong on his heart about families. And I said, Dr. J, I want you to come and share that with our church. You see, different voices have different messages. And so we need to hear the wind words of the Spirit. I want you to be here on the 28th to hear Dr. J. He's going to do a tremendous job, and I'm honored to have him come. But we're going to have other guests. We're going to have some of our own team will be preaching. I'll be, I'll, obviously, I'll be preaching right along. I don't mean I'm quitting preaching or anything like that. But, um, and I won't. I'll do a lot of it. But I still, I want you to know there's other voices I want us to hear. I've got some great guests already lined up for this year. We will announce ahead since you know. The problem is, I want to tell you all the problem. <laughs> the problem is, when I try to disclose to you to be, have integrity on my part, some of you stay home. Come, because you're going to miss out on the mix of what God has for our church if you don't come. Just come, say, well, Pastor Reggie's not speaking today. That's going to be a day off for me. No, just do the opposite. You get to hear me all the time. But come hear these wonderful voices that we bring in that bring blessing to our church and balance to our message. 
and it'll be good. Amen? Amen. Enough about all that. But I want us today to concentrate on hearing. John talked about it's expedient for you, John 16, verse 7, that I go away, talking about Jesus himself. Now listen, for if I go not away, the Spirit will not come. But if I go to him that sent me, I will come to you. And he's talking about through the Holy Spirit. How many of you want that? But if I depart, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit who could be every place at one time. He's with us this morning. He's in other churches in our city right now. Every church that will open up to him. And in the states and all over the nation, whatever time they're all meeting and around the world. Some people have already had church. In the Philippines, they've already had church this morning because they're 12 hours ahead. But wherever people come and worship God and be in the realm of the Spirit, He's going to work in their midst. Just here at Family Worship Center, we put a little more emphasis on the Spirit. And the reason being is, I believe it's so essential to follow the voice of the Lord and to hear Him. He said, make sure that you make room for wind words of the Spirit to blow in your midst. That's the focus in the heart of our church, and more particularly, since I heard that a year to here, I believe we want to put more emphasis on that and see you grow and see you get direction. Some of you are like I was out on that trail. You've lost your way. You, you, you're all turned around. You, you, you got turned around somehow in all that loops you took. You just got, you lost your direction. You look up and the, the clouds are dark. You can't see where the sun is shining. You're under a maze of trees and you can't really see what's going on. But it's a beautiful thing to just trust in here. Pilots say this, that one of the hardest things they ever have to learn is to fly when they can't see. When they put a mask on them or whatever over their eyes and they can't see. All they're allowed to see is the instruments in front of them. They can't look out the window. They can't do it. They've got to fly strictly by the instruments. And sometimes you're not going to be able to see. You're going to have to fly by the instruments. And that is the voice of the Lord inside you. So important. So essential. He said this. It's expedient for you. It's necessary. It's important for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the spirit cannot come. But if I go, I will send him to you. And then notice with me also another beautiful verse that he gives us. Because I've gotten a little off here, but that's okay. I'm glad I'm off. Praise God. Notice verse 13. 6, 13. However, he goes on to say, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. How many of you want guidance? You want to be guided. Now notice, for he will not speak on his own authority. I want you to know that when the Holy Spirit gives you a cue, he's not speaking of himself. He's not speaking on his own authority. All authority is rested in the Father through the Son via the Holy Spirit. He's an active, but he gets his directions from the Father. Jesus even said, everything you see me do, everything I do, I either see or hear it of the Father. I do nothing on my own. And that's the Holy Spirit is just like that. Just know this, that when the Holy Spirit gives you a prompting, it came directly from the Father. He's your heavenly Father. Glory to God. I tell you, we're to be like little children and sit there and receive from our heavenly Father because he wants to give absolute guidance and direction to each of us. It's amazing how his presence just settles in. You know, when that's here, I can sit here all day long. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears. See, the Holy Spirit hears just like you do. Think of the Holy Spirit being the Spirit of God and our spirit being the bigger part of us. We need to hear just like he hears. The Holy Spirit hears the Father. We hear the Holy Spirit from the Father. And it's a beautiful thing that happens, how he transmits information 
not to our brains, but to our spirit man, the inner man. And he'll tell you things to come. Whatever he hears, he will speak. Do you know there's no suggestion in the Bible that the Holy Spirit quit speaking? Those that have said such things just made it up. They're trying to take the Spirit out of the church. But nowhere is it not present continuous that the Spirit still speaks. You can study all the languages you want to. You can get in the Greek all you want to. You will not hear that God has spoken but doesn't speak. He has spoken, but He still speaks. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? And I'm so glad for that because it is a present continuous verbiage that He uses there. He will tell you things to come. Then finally, I want you to hear John 10, 27. So that you can understand it is your right, your privilege. I like the word privilege more than right. It is your privilege that God speaks to you. Jesus said in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. There's nothing about that that's past tense. It's present continuous. And we're to hear the voice of our shepherd. Next week, I'm going to be talking about how to hear. Today I've talked about that we need to hear. But next week I want to talk about how to hear. Because you will not have to make the mistakes in the future that you made in the past with just a few adjustments that will change your life forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 